Hey guys, it's Vintage Vinny, and I have an eBay sales report for you all from Q4. I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas to all of my Jewish fans. I hope you all are enjoying Hanukkah, because I know Hanukkah started quite late this year, which is kind of weird. It started on Christmas Eve, and it's going to go on for the rest of this week, I believe. eBay this quarter, or this holiday season, was not that great for me. I think it might be because I hadn't been finding a lot of the vintagey kind of things that I like because people were just charging an arm and a leg this flea market season. It was bad. Anyway, I wanted to do both eBay and Amazon because that's typically what I like to do with my sales reports. But because I had so many Amazon sales, and thank God for them, I couldn't squeeze it all into one. And Screencast-O-Matic only lets you record 15 minutes for free each time you use it. So I'm going to do the eBay sales this time, and then the next video that I put out will be all of my Amazon sales. And I am really, really thankful for Amazon because I made some pretty darn good money. So let's get into the sales video. All right, from my last sales report, this is where my next sale started. I've had Yoshi's Island DS for I can't tell you how long. I have the Game Boy Advance version, which is what I grew up having. Not a really big fan of Yoshi's Island DS. I guess it's because it's kind of the same thing, only just with a bit more action and adventures, and there are more um, characters. But Yoshi's Island for the Game Boy was much better, in my opinion, just because it was classic, and it's what I've known. So I bought this several years ago, probably five years ago, just to see what it was like. I don't, didn't pay very much for it. I think I may have only paid like 9 or $10. So I made double what I spent, $19.99. It was like new. I kept the jewel case and all the instructions and everything like that in perfect condition because I'm not one to let things get all messed up unless I use it constantly. So buyer paid shipping for that. Alright, next item to sell are these, I'm assuming they're probably from the 1970s or the 1980s, late 70s, early 80s. Neiman Marcus size 7 to 7.5 royal blue satin shoes. I picked these up probably a year ago with a bunch of other stuff. I think I only bought the shoes and some like uh, Christmas ornaments. These cost me, god I can't even remember, it was so long ago. Um, it was, I think he charged me 10 bucks for everything, so pieced out to maybe a dollar something and change, but again it was so long ago and I didn't don't have a record for it. So I sold these for $34.99. They were in brand new condition, as you can see the soles have not been worn and the bottoms are clean clean sold those perfectly the person paid me right away and I just shipped them out and they were out of my hair alright I picked this up at an estate sale a long long time ago I debated whether or not I wanted to sell it but I said you know what I I really do because it's it's not really something that I'm typically into so it's this 1960s little dog in the basket toy. It's a wind-up toy, and he pops out, and he um, he sounds like he's chirping instead of barking. But it's it was really really cute, and the fact that it came with the original box helped it sell. I did have it up for $24.99, but I took a best offer of $20 just to get it out of here, and the buyer paid shipping, of course. All right, this is something that I've had for over a year. Bought these along with a bunch of other cool knick-knacky items for $7. I already made my money back a lot from this guy. So this is one of those donkey push puppets. I know these are very, very collectible. Not really worth all that much, but I think that's probably why people collect them, because they're easy to find, and they come in all kinds of animals and shapes and sizes and whatnot. So I managed to sell this for $5.99 by our paid shipping. Alright, something good that you should always be on the lookout for, especially during this holiday season, are the 1960s Pixie Elves. I should have listed these for much more than what I put them up for because they sold ver fairly quickly. But these ones were not in the best of shape. One of them had a popsicle stick glued to the back of him, so I had to take that off and the glue residue stuck to him. But as you can see, on the back of the pixie with the yellows but it says all new material Japan these things are very very collectible I own several myself but the ones that don't look like this I like the original ones the one that looks exactly like how they were advertised so sold both of those for $7.99 and I paid $1.78 a piece for those 
Not a huge profit if you piece them out together, but hey, it's still something. Alright, I bought these at a flea market this past year for, I think it was $5 for, let's see, it was 5 bucks for four of them. So I paid a total of $1.25 a piece for these. Because they were in such horrible shape, I didn't want to list them for too much. And this one is a really, really cute um, sailor girl and boy in a uh, swimming pool. They're from 1957. And they this one sold for $4.99. Same person also bought the uh, little lamb from me as well. And this one was also from 1957. And I sold it for $4.99, so I doubled my money already. And the two that I haven't listed yet are going to be worth the most because of the subject matter. So be on the lookout for, hopefully I'll be selling those very, very soon. Especially now that people have gotten gift cards, Christmas is over, and, you know, people love to buy their stuff. Alright, this is something that I've had in my collection for a while. I recently updated mine and got a better version. So this is the 1942 Coca-Cola Roadster Girl serving tray. I got this probably last year for $19.99. I had never owned it at the time of me winning this off of eBay. So this was something I bought off eBay and now I resold on eBay. As you can see, it has some scuffing and, and there's marks all over it. Again, these trays were meant to be used when they were produced. They weren't meant to just be like displayable pieces like what we do now for those who collect them. So I paid $19.99 for this. I did have it up for $39.99. I took a best offer of $35, which I thought was completely fine. It was only $5 off of what I was asking. And plus, I mean, it's not in mint condition, so you have to be careful when you're pricing these. Alright, this is something that I had returned way back when I went to Texas. This is that Chaps Ralph Lauren Splash Cologne, 1.7 fluid ounces, which still had a significant amount in it. Again, I paid nothing for this. This came from the dumpster down the street when um, a gentleman of my, uh, who lived near us passed away. So this was in his splash of stuff that they threw away. And I sold it for, I think, $25 the first time. They returned it. Then I put it up for $19.99, and I took a best offer of $17. The per person paid shipping, and they left me positive feedback. So this is not coming back to me. All right, another really, really cool piece that I picked up is this Industrial Milk Glass Gooseneck Lampshade. I picked this up at a an antique store probably a year and a half, two years ago. Some of this stuff is pretty old, and I just got around to listing it. So I had it up for $29.99, and someone sent me an offer of $23, which I gladly accepted because that's $20 more than what I paid for this item. All right, this was an extremely good pickup on my part. Shout out to Heather from the Paper Castle. If you're not following her already, I will link her down below. She found a 1971 Betty Crocker cookbook, uh, the binder version. For some reason, the binder version does very, very well. When I went through it, I thought pages were missing, and uh, thankfully there were none missing. I had to go through the whole book and make sure it was put in chronological order. Thankfully, all the pages were there, and they were in oh good shape, I would say, but I had to go through it and make sure that everything was there and that it was put in chronological order. I paid $1 for this. And I sold it for $39.99, and of course the buyer paid shipping. Alright, another item that I picked up at an antique shop is another, I wouldn't say it's a gooseneck lampshade, I think I put it as a circular pattern milk glass lampshade. I paid 50 cents for this, it was in a booth that I think was either moving out or was just clearing out their inventory. So they had a dollar on it, and I paid 50 cents. I did take a best offer of $9.45 for this just to get it out of here because I've had it for so long. And as you can see, the shipping was quite expensive. For some odd reason, these things weigh a ton. I don't know why. And this one was actually pretty light. It was thin glass. Alright, another item to sell from that estate sale was this 1960s ceramic pixie elf figurine. This was $1.78. It came from that same sale where I bought all the other pixies. I was going to keep it, but then I said to myself, you know, I'm not really into Christmas ceramics. And plus, this one had some paint wear and everything like that, but it sold for $16.99, and the buyer paid the shipping. Why did do that? Okay, another really, really good item to look out for are the Royal Hard Plastic Light-Up Santa Clauses. 
Sometimes the electrical component can go into his hand here and you can put a bubble light in it or just a regular light. And they also come with little plastic trees which were always broken so the, even just the trees themselves can be worth some money. I picked this up last year at a flea market for $10 which is a little bit out of my comfort zone in terms of price. But I knew because he was in really really good condition he would sell for a good number. So I paid the 10 and I sold him for $35. Buyer paid shipping, of course. All right, this is another green room meetup item that I picked up when I was down in Texas at a pawn shop. This is the Lord of the Rings um, special extended DVD edition collection. I did pay a dollar a piece for these sets and I sold them for $18. I took a best offer of 18. I did have them up for 35 bucks, but then once I saw that the discs had scratches on them, which I should have looked at even more when I was looking at them in the shop, I still sold them for 18 bucks, which is not bad. Someone got a really good deal on this, and I made $15, so I can't complain there. All right, another piece that I've had or that I had purchased this holiday se or this um season Happens to be a 1950s Woolican Gun musical stuffed cat with the original tag on it. I paid $20 for three of these. Not three of these ones exactly, but three different ones. And this one I had up originally for $49.99. It had a watcher on it every time it was listed. But it just nobody was biting. So I lowered the price to $39.99 and I took a best offer of $35. And the buyer paid the shipping. What's even cooler about this is how, look how nice it's of condition it's in. I mean, the fur was still very, very soft. The musical function worked. And it's a beautiful piece. And somebody who collects this stuff will absolutely love it in the years to come. And as you can see, it had the original tag on it. And it is from Japan. So I thought that was a really, really good piece. That was a really good sale on my part. The last item that just sold last night on eBay happens to be this uh, KitchenAid Cookie Cutters Heart Circle Star Set. This I purchased way back when, I think that was back at the beginning of the year when I first started doing FBA. I was not paying attention to uh, Amazon fees. I was just paying attention to the prices. If the price was going, or, sorry, I'm going to mess this uh, sentence up. When I scan something at the thrift store, if the price was more than what the thrift store was charging, I would purchase it to send it in without paying attention to how much the fees were. So I had Amazon send this back to me, and I just listed it a few days ago, and I finally sold it for $6. I think I may have paid $4.99 for it. So not a huge profit, but then again, I made $2. Probably should have just redonated it, but then again... Smack dab, I made some money off of it, and of course the buyer pays shipping. I have to get both the cat and these cookie cutters out. So that's all I have for you today in terms of eBay sales. Again, I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah to all my Jewish followers. Please remember to follow me on Instagram under Vintage Vinny's Treasures. That's Vintage underscore Vinny's underscore Treasures, all lowercase letters. Find me on Facebook, follow me on Periscope under Vintage Vinny. All that stuff is going to be linked down in the description box below. Thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned for the Amazon sales.